Jason back again to show you about hue and saturation. A really interesting thing about hue and saturation is there's multiple facets to a hue and saturation adjustment layer. Now, hue and saturation is used to change the color or the saturation of an image. And we do have hue and saturation under the adjustments section here under image, but this is going to adjust the image directly. So I definitely want to go in to my layer adjustment down at the bottom of my layers panel and use my hue and saturation adjustment layer. Now hue and saturation has many different things in the same panel. One of the basic things is taking an image and using the hue slider and simply changing the hue. So my rubber ducky here can go in and change all these colors. And this is something that is used quite often, especially when you're dealing with products and you have one product that has to have multiple different colors. They're probably not going to shoot the products in every color. They're probably going to give you the colors to go ahead and adjust the one image. So we can do the hue and change everything. Any color that you want is in the entire spectrum of the hue. Now this is a fairly saturated image, so we're getting some pretty intense colors as we slide the hue slider back and forth. The saturation slider allows us to take out all of the saturation and give us a black and white looking image that is going to simply be desaturated. Obviously if we saturate it, it's going to get much more intense. If we desaturate, it just simply becomes a black and white image. The lightness and darkness overall here I don't use only because you can see it just makes it look darker and lighter and isn't something that we use. So it's a really interesting way to go in and change the color of something. I'm going to jump over to my image here of the shirt. And if I do a hue and saturation on my shirt, this is a typical product that we would go in and we would be able to change this color of the shirt to any color whatsoever. Now, starting with the saturation, it's moderately to heavily saturated here. So I couldn't be expected to go ahead and get a really soft looking color. I would have to start off with a very lightly saturated image. You can see here, I can also turn that into grayscale, okay? And then my hue doesn't make any difference because the hue is the color and the saturation is going to be how much color there is. And so I can desaturate an image like that. Now, hue and saturation also has this unique feature called colorize. And colorize allows you to go in and actually just simply apply a single color to an overall image. And something that'll make a little bit more sense here is if I say I jump into this and I do a hue and saturation layer, and I've got this multi-colored image, and if I do colorize here, what it'll do is it will desaturate it or turn it into a black and white looking image. And then with the hue, it allows me to apply a color to this overall, basically like a black and white image, but instead of black, what you're getting is you're getting kind of your midtones are getting that color. So this is a really cool feature with the colorize portion. I can make it look like it's black and white and then change the hue here to kind of, kind of give you a different color, substitute a color there. So if you want that old sepia tone look, you click the colorize and you adjust your hue to get that red right there, which is kind of an interesting thing. And you can also saturate that or desaturate that if you want to make an older looking picture right there. Another way of making something look old too is if you take a color image and you desaturate it like this, it makes it look like the image has been kind of faded, which is an interesting way of doing this. And I took off the colorize to get that. So you can overly saturate or you can kind of desaturate to the point where there's still some color to make an older faded photograph. Now yet another thing that we can do with the hue and saturation is we can actually target a specific color in here too, which is even more awesome. So say I wanted to go in and I wanted to target the reds. The expectation of me going in and putting a selection, an actual, you know, using the selection tool and moving, you know, putting marching ants around the red isn't possible. So what I'm going to do with my hue and saturation here is I'm going to click on my master list and I'm going to go to my red. So it's going to target the reds here. Now you'll notice when I target the reds, I get these little brackets down here and I've got my dark and my light gray. 
The color that I choose from the drop down menu here is in between these right here. So that's the red. And then basically these are going to be the fade out. So this says, okay, it's going to include everything that's red, but it's also going to then include some of the magenta before it fades out. So I can basically control how much fade I have on both sides of the red. It's going to fade into the magenta, fade into the yellow. So now, since it's basically targeted the red range, and then basically fading off to the yellows and the magentas, as I go through and I begin to change the hue and the saturation, it's only going to target the reds and then fade off into the magentas and the yellows. Now, if you pay attention to the ramps at the bottom, the top ramp here is what I'm, my input or what my image is showing me. The bottom ramp is showing me what colors are now being replaced. So as I slide this back and forth, you can see kind of like this pulsating color bar here. This is just simply showing me that as I slide this slider back and forth, don't pay attention to what color is on the slider, pay attention to what color is down here. So as I see, as I slide this here, now the greens are going to replace the reds and the greens are also going to come into the yellows. And then I'm going to get some yellow and red as it goes off into the magenta. So as I slide this back and forth, I start to get more blues in there and then the really saturated blues. If I would like to adjust more of the image, I can then slide basically my the, the fade or the blend all the way out, but I could also truncate these very much and I could very much say, okay, I want a very narrow definition of the color. And you can see as I do that, pay attention to the box here, you can see that the box will then be included or I can really exclude that so I have a faster fade off. The closer you move these in, the more you're going to get a drastic color shift in here. But this is a really cool way to go in and target certain areas here and just simply shift those colors one way or another. So a lot of interesting things you can do with hue and saturation as an adjustment layer to really shift those colors. Now, I also did something here with hue and saturation, and this was going in and being able to target this plant on the clematis, or this is actually clematis growing up on the house here. And I had done a hue and saturation layer. And this is really tricky because I had to go in and select all of these little bits and pieces to go in and do the hue and saturation to change that. And once I created that very difficult selection, I then went in and adjusted the hue and saturation to get that purple so I could change that look and feel, which is a cool way of doing this. Okay. Now, this going in and doing a selection here is pretty tricky, and I actually used the color range. So if I go back to my image here, I actually used this really cool thing called color range, which I will definitely show in another video. I'm not going to show you now because that's more of a selection type of thing. But hue and saturation can give you lots of different cool effects, changing the color of things without having to go in and specifically do a selection around the object. Now there's another type of adjustment too that I'd like to talk about, and that's what's called selective color. And selective color is super cool. I like selective color because, kind of like going in and doing hue and saturation here, you can target individual colors, reds, yellows, greens, blues, cyans, magentas here, and you can kind of adjust and change the color. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use my selective color here on this image, and selective color is super cool. Selective color says, you know what, instead of putting a selection around something, let's just go in and select the color based on what color you want to target. So here in the selective color, I've got reds, yellows, greens, cyans, blues, magentas, whites, neutrals, and blacks. And then I, when I choose a specific color here, like the cyan, say I want to adjust the sky. I know that you think the sky is blue, but there's more cyan than anything else. I can adjust the cyan, and then I can go to my cyan adjustment here, and I can say, okay, I want more cyan in there. If I bump up the magenta, it's going to warm it up. Ooh, that looks very nice. Uh, yellow kind of makes it green. I'll take the yellow out, and I can also add the black for some saturation as well. There's two buttons at the bottom here, relative and absolute. Relative will only adjust the amount relative to the amount of color in the image. And so some of these adjustments, you may not see much adjustment simply because there's not that much color, so the adjustment is relative. I usually keep it on absolute, which allows me to get a much broader range of adjustments, and also I can see quicker results. 
As I go through and I target the colors here, maybe I target the greens, I can go and I can target the cyan, so make the grass greener here, take out the magenta of the grass there, maybe put in more yellow or take that out, and I can adjust the black overall as well. Now this is adjusting every place where there's green in the image. If I go to the yellows, this image has a lot of yellow in it, a lot. So if I target the yellows here, you'll notice that the entire house has a lot of yellow and the people do too. So you gotta be a little bit careful with this because it's not just targeting like her yellow shirt here, it's targeting everything that's yellow. So something like this where we have a very warm image, the yellows may create a lot of dramatic changes. And I don't need to do an adjustment layer for each one of these colors. I can go in and do each color overall in the same adjustment layer and really bring out the intensity of this overall. So it's kind of cool how I can really bring that up. And you can see with that selective color here, I didn't have to put a selection around to now go in and target these areas. And it's kind of difficult to put a selection around this tree and then just target the sky and do like a curves adjustment layer and then adjust her hair or their pants or something. Selective color is a really quick and easy way to do this. Now, I'm going to use selective color in a much more targeted way. I would like to get this tree to be much more red. Now, if I just go into my selective color and I choose my reds here and I bump this up, yeah, it does the tree, but it also looks like all the people are sunburned too, so it's not really what I want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna further target this area with a selection, and then I'm going to do a selective color just on this area. So. I'm going to take my polygon lasso tool and I'm just gonna do a quick selection around this tree here. I mean, you could spend hours trying to select every leaf, which is fine, you could, but I'm going to simply select this area, doing a quick selection here, like that. Now, I wouldn't wanna leave this like this because then if I did any type of adjustment layer here, and I did something like this, you could see that I've got that very strong edge. So that's not gonna work for me at all. So what I'm gonna do is, when I do my selection, I'm gonna go into Select and Mask, and I want to feather that selection because I don't want to see that hard edge result of my adjustment layer. So I feather this out, not like this, but I feather it out so I have a soft edge so I can't really see that edge. Now, with that target right there, I'm going to choose my adjustment layer icon. I'm gonna use my selective color and now with my selective color, it has left everything else out in the image and it's only targeted that because with my selection, it has now put a mask on here. Black is hiding the adjustment and white is letting the adjustment show through only here. Now because there's not really any other red inside here, if I target the reds, I can now go in and take out the cyan, which is the coolness of it, so it's gonna warm up when I take the cyan out. I can adjust the magenta as well and really adjust this hugely so. Check that out. So now I've been able to go in and target just the tree. Now you do notice that the fence got a little bit warm right here because yeah, my selection wasn't perfect, but there wasn't much other red in the selected area here, so I don't really see a hard edge around this area. So now I was able to target that tree and to do an amazing adjustment on that because I targeted the reds and there really wasn't much red outside of the tree in just that selected area. So my selective color doesn't need to be done globally, it could be done very specifically. If I wanted to do their pants, I certainly could. I could go in with like my quick selection tool and target their pants to get all that blue jean color, maybe more blue, and adjust it that way. So my adjustment layers can be done very specifically, very targeted, or can be done overall. If I go back in and I hold down my Option or Alt key, and Option or Alt click on the background, you realize, oh my gosh, you know, those colors weren't, were kind of muted. And I bring them up. So there's my hue and saturation on the plant. There's my selective color overall to really bump up the color. And then my targeted selective color here on this tree. So using the hue and saturation and using the selective color is really cool. Now there's one more thing that I wanna show you. I'm gonna just very 
loosely target this person right here. And I'm going to try this hue and saturation layer on top of this. Now, this is cool if you wanted to do a black and white and a color image together. If I were then to take and desaturate this person, had I done a good selection around this person, I can now take and I can desaturate to make it look like this particular area is black and white in a color image. So if you want to go ahead and dramatically change the look and feel of an image, you can desaturate everything and have just a specific area a color, or you can do the opposite where you can just make this desaturated. And you may have seen these on commercials, you know, for people that have a cold, everything's blurry or they're black and white and everything else is color and everybody else is enjoying the surroundings and they can't. This is how you do it, folks. You just target and desaturate that so it looks like you have a black and white portion in a color image. And all that is, is just simply targeted desaturation. Interesting stuff. And it gets better when we get onto more color adjustments.